altogether fitting that we gather on days like this to remember that the birthing of this nation didn't just occur on a July 4th over 200 years ago with the signing of the Declaration of Independence. It was many other days and events like April 19th of 1775 and many others that brought the people of that day to a point where they knew as many had known for years in their hearts that they needed to form a new nation. But upon the passage of the Constitution, I think it was Ben Franklin who said, now that we've given the American people a republic, let's see if they can keep it. And we today are here gathered to see if we can keep the republic that our founding fathers and mothers provided for us. Historically, Patriots Day commemorates both the spirit and the action of Americans to resolve the age-old dilemma of liberty versus slavery. What our forefathers gave birth to was not just a military revolution. It was a revolutionary idea that governments should serve the people and not the other way around. The Constitution in and in particular, the Bill of Rights, was born out of a tax revolt associated with an attempted gun confiscation that occurred on this date in 1775. Today is the 234th commemoration of this event where average folks, businessmen, workers, farmers, and clergy picked up a rifle and said no to English stimulus packages and royal bailouts. And around us today are patriots who gave as much in France, the Philippines, in Afghanistan, Iraq, and last week in Somalia, and did so quietly without asking for recognition and without asking for handouts or bailouts. Having a balanced budget is not about some abstraction. It's not about telling you the numbers. It's not about explaining a trillion dollars. Having a balanced budget is about having a moral heart and saying, it's unfair for me to make other people pay for my folly. Right. Yeah. My favorite president, Ronald Wilson Reagan. Yeah. His best line, he would come on and in his own inimitable fashion, he would say, Congress is worse than drunk sailors. They spend money like drunk sailors. And then he'd step back. His timing was always impeccable. He'd step back and he'd get that look like, wait a minute, I, I thought that over. And he says, wait, I want to apologize to the drunk sailors. <laughs> drunk sailors spend their own money. Congress is spending your money. How many of you would say you're pro-gun? I can't hear you. Are you pro-gun? One more time. Are you pro-gun? I'd like to suggest a change to that. Because our opposition on the left kills us with words. And if you hate guns, 
like many of them do, then the right position is to be anti-gun. And if you say you're pro-gun, that makes you the devil to our opposition. I think the better choice of words is that you are pro-rights. You are all pro-rights. You're pro-freedom, pro-safety, pro-liberty, pro-self-defense. And what does that make them? Anti-rights and anti-safety and anti-liberty and anti-freedom. And that's not what we need in America. So the next time somebody asks you, are you pro-gun, what are you going to say? I'm pro-rights. I am pro-rights. How about you? We know from the beginning words of the Declaration that these are not rights granted to us by government. They're rights granted to us inalienable by Almighty God. And so the question still remains for us today in 2009. Will we keep a republic that so many gave their lives for? Starting with the 90 Americans who gave their life on April the 19th, 1775 in Lexington and Concord. I hope that our answer individually and collectively is that yes, we can keep a republic and we can honor the sacrifices of those that have gone before and pass on a better United States of America that those, for those that come after us. What is America? And I don't think that's a question that can be answered very easily because America is as many things as there are people to answer the question. It's a complex topic. The American way is hard work. And the American way is keeping the benefits of your hard work. It's ownership of private property and the sanctity of a contract. It's the idea that you and you alone own the fruits of your labors. Yeah. It's an idea of paramount importance that you own yourself, self-ownership, self-ownership. You and you alone are responsible for you. This isn't a right you demand or get from the state or earn. It's a fundamental right based on the fact that you exist. It's a right that comes from your creator. It's the natural order of things. And it's honored here like nowhere else. Now, you need to leave here today proselytizing. You need to leave here today balancing your own books emotionally, spiritually, and physically. You need to leave here with the strength internal to yourself and the commitment that you'll go to the Creator for help because you cannot stand up against the forces of evil without that commitment. You have to leave here and preach the gospel of freedom. Or stand with all of us